Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, the 8th of June. I hope you had a good weekend. And uh, let's see what we've got to start the week out. So this morning, we have a 20-minute AMRAP. Okay, so that's 20 minutes of as many reps or as many rounds as possible. And we're doing, we're doing 10 stationary lateral step-ups, right? So we're stepping latch, laterally up onto a box or some kind of an ob object. We've got 20 deadlift jumps, which we did this last week. And then we've got seven two-for-one burpees. Okay, so if you don't like burpees, you're gonna dislike these even more because it's a two-for-one. Alrighty, so seven, uh, 10 reps of those, 20 reps of those, seven reps of those. So our stationary step-ups, so we're gonna adjust, uh, we're gonna scale our stationary step-ups by either adjusting the height Okay, or by scaling the reps down. Uh, deadlift jumps, we're gonna scale by either omitting the jump, okay, or just doing a, some kind of a good, good morning. If your back or your hips don't like that hinging too much, you may do some kind of a squat. And then our two for one burpees, we may just do a regular burpee, okay, or we are going to do a kickback. Our two for one burpees, we're doing two push ups at the bottom of every burpee. All right, it's awesome. Right, let's have a quick look at what that is. All right, so first one, so we've got a stationary lateral step up. So what are we gonna do? is take a box, literally, you can have one foot on the box. What I want you to focus on is make sure you've got your heel on the box, right, and that your knee isn't coming forward over the top of the toe, right? So if you're just doing the sideways here, what I don't want is this coming forward. I want you to shift your weight backwards, so the weight is in your hips, okay, and then your weight is in the heels, and as you press up, you're gonna step up sideways, press up one, touch, press up at the top, squeeze the glutes, control the midline, step back, two, press up, three, right? If you're going from the sideways, same thing. Hop, press, one, step, hop, press, two, lateral step up. So you're gonna do 10 on the left, 10 on the right, or what you can do is you're gonna step over the top, step up, over, touch, step up, over that, if you've got some kind of a box that you can do that with. Otherwise, just do your 10 on the left, 10 on the right. If 10 reps is too much for you, then what you do is break it down a little bit more, do five on the left, five on the right, five on the left, five on the right, to reach your 20 reps. That's your lateral step up. Okay, nice and easy. You can find a small little step. You can find something slightly higher as well. Um, using a chair would obviously be quite high, but it'll be more work for you. If you find that you haven't got something that's suitable something low or too, uh, too low is too easy, but too high is a little bit more difficult, then go for the higher one if you want to, but scale your reps down to make it a little bit more easy to go with. All right, deadlift jumps we did the other day. So deadlift jump, what we're looking for is we're trying to push his hips back. I don't want to see you bending forward into the knees, hinging at the hips, press back into the hips, slide the hands down. And so we've got this first hinging at the hips, hamstrings, glutes, back squeeze. That's going to be a deadlift movement and then we're gonna do it into a jump. So you're gonna do it back, deadlift, jump, deadlift, jump, deadlift, jump, on the side. That's gonna be your deadlift jumps. Scaling this down, okay, we can do just do the deadlift portion, okay, and we're gonna cut out the jumping, okay, or we're gonna scale down to a good morning. So you're gonna press hips back, press, if press back, you can have a broomstick or something else between the shoulder blades, pressing out, which isn't that different, honestly, from just doing a hip and a press. Okay, so you're gonna do your deadlift jumps. If you wanna get a little bit more work out of that, you can do a squat jump, hips press back, hop, squat, squat. Do squat jumps. If you wanna change it up even more, you could do 10 squat jumps, 10 normal air, uh, 10 normal air squats. Mix it up, change as much as you need to to make that work. And then we're doing two for one burpee. So two for one burpee, you're gonna do two push-ups at the bottom. So it's jump down, jump back, push up, push up, jump up, one. Jump back, two push-ups, jump up, two. Jump back, two push-ups, three. Jump back, four. Woo. Get spicy quickly, heart rate going. If you're not doing two for one burpees, do a one burpee, jump back, knees to floor, chest to floor, push back up. One, if you're not doing burpees, you're doing kickbacks, kick back, one, kick back. Two, if you're not doing kickbacks, you can do a step back. Step back, one, for your step backs. Okay guys, that's gonna be your workout. So we've got those 10 stationary step ups. 10 on the left, 10 on the right, 5, 5, 5, 5 if you want to. 
20 deadlift jumps, your 10 or your seven, two for one burpees. That's your Monday workout. Have fun. It's gonna burn the lungs. Right, guys. So your warm up for today. So today we have got project inversion session number four on the books for today. And today what we're focusing on on the project inversion is we start to work on that balance in the upside down position. So session number one and number three was focusing on developing some shoulder girdle strength, that time upside down, and then shifting the weight from side to side. Session number two that we did what really works on a lot of mobility. Session number four is we'll still do some mobility and warm up, make sure you're engaging properly in the sh shoulder girdle. But today is very much about trying to find the balance. I'm gonna be doing some shifting our weight from side to side, either from a side to side position to start to develop that feel from an overhead position. And I'm gonna to start to do some floaters where we start to bring the feet away from the wall to start to feel where the balance is in that overhead position when the feet are up in the air. Okay, and then we've got different scaling options for you to feel what that starts to feel like being upside down as well. Okay, so what we're gonna start with to warm up, we're just gonna go for a 200 meter run or a 400 meter run just to get the heart rate up a little bit. We're gonna come back in, we're gonna skip for five minutes. If you do skip for five minutes, if you can't skip, I just want you to do some jumping jacks. Get the shoulders warm a little bit, do some backs and forwards, do a full overhead position for those jumping jacks. Then we're going to do a little bit of, mo of mobility before we get into our handstand shoulder shifts and before we get into our handstand floaters. So the mobility to start off with, right, we're just going to start with a pushback, nice easy work. Yeah, I'm going to do more like a pushback, press and come forward, stomach tight. So you want a little bit of an extension, keep that stomach tight. I'm not dropping into my lower back. My knees are up off the floor and press back. And press forward. And press back. And press forward. And you do about 10 or 12 presses. Then we're going to do some overhead shoulder taps. Uh, overhead shoulder taps. We're going to push back and we're just going to lock out. So lock through the shoulder, change, lock through the shoulder, change. Lock to the shoulder, change. Don't have to tap under the arm. I'm just showing you where I want you to lock out. Don't have to tap here. Okay, if that's too much, then you can just do a bit of a shift. Shift, because it's the same kind of work that you're gonna be doing as part of a shoulder release. Shifting to the side, shifting to the side, shifting to the side, and you're gonna feel that range of movement in that overhead position. Elbows locked out, press the shoulders back as much as possible, okay? And then, Work at range of movement. Then the next one, do a little bit of shoulder mobility. So we're going to do it under the body reach, press through, and turn, and reach through, and turn, and reach through, and turn, and reach through, and turn. I'm going to do, say, five or ten on the other side. So every movement, we're trying to get as much movement and rotation at the end of every position as possible. That should get your shoulders nice and mobile, both in the overhead position as well as the shoulders for some more mobility across the front of the chest. Then, once we've done that, we're gonna do three rounds. So we've got some handstand shoulder shifts and handstand floaters. You're gonna do 10 seconds of handstand shoulder shifts. What's gonna happen is we're gonna be in an overhead position. We're gonna lock out. Feet are going to be, hands are going to be on the floor, feet up in the air. We're going to shift the feet from side to side and try and control that shift in the shoulders in that overhead position. And what that does is it teaches awareness of what happens with your body and with your feet and con trying to control the shoulders in this position here. You're going to do 10 seconds of that. Oh, sorry, no, 10 shifts, not 10 seconds. 10 sideways, left and right. Rest, let the shoulders rest as much as you need to let them rest. And then our float is, is to try, we're gonna go up, up into hands down on the wall, and we're gonna try and bring those feet away from the wall a little bit. Okay, so we'll see what those look like. And then I'm gonna give you scaling options for each of those. Okay, so for the first one, handstand shoulder shifts. So let me just pull this board out of the way. Okay, so for the handstand shoulder shifts, first progression for the handstand shoulder, shoulder shifts, what we're gonna look for is hands gonna come down, you're gonna push back into that push back position again. You're gonna press back through shoulders as much as you can. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna shift the weight. Press. And that's to keep those elbows locked out. Try not to let the elbows bend. Elbows stay locked. Push out overhead. Three, four, five. If I'm working from the side, I'm still pressing out. One, two, three. And you're gonna do 10. 
in total from side to side. That's your first progression on the shoulders. If you can't get so far overhead, you can even just do in a push-up position. Three, four, side, one, two, so you can feel that position. And what the idea is, you're loading that shoulder girdle even in a push-up position from side to side, and this is having to stabilize to control that shoulder. Next time I'm gonna go into a pike position. So you're gonna take your feet up on the wall, and we do the same kind of thing. Push back, feet are there, take your feet halfway up the wall, get nice and comfortable, get your feet nice and wide, and you're just gonna push back, push back, push back, push this out, and I'm shifting, I'm trying to get as much weight into that shoulder and arm and hand as I can without the elbows bending. Elbows stay locked, press the side, press the side, keep staying in the air, and you're doing about 10 reps. The next one, we're gonna do still like a, a wall climb. You're gonna take your feet up the wall as high as you can. So depending on your level of strength, depending on your shoulder mobility, depends on how far overhead you're gonna be able to reach into the overhead position. Depends on how far you take your feet up the wall. Depends on how close you get your chest to the wall. Ideally, I'm looking for you to get your chest as close as possible. So I'll show you one option with my chest a little bit further away and then I'm gonna bring it all the way in. But we're still shifting that weight from side to side, focusing on the lockout, shoulders working. So from there, hands closer, and I press up, bring my feet up, press, press, press. Okay, I'm gonna keep my feet together, and from now I'm just shifting my weight from side to side, do 10 of those. If I wanna get closer, now the closer one is where my feet start to move, arms locked out, and I'm pushing through my shoulders. Now my feet move, now my body doesn't move, now my feet, side, because ultimately, when you're doing a handstand, it's your balance and your feet that's going to be moving. Three, four, and those are your handstand shoulder shifts. Not so easy, but if you can get up there, take your time, try and work nice and slowly to get those feet shifting from side to side. Mm -hmm. Okay guys, so next one, handstand floaters. So what we're looking for the handstand floaters, the end goal is ideally to start feeling where your balance is when your feet are overhead and are you too far this way or too far that way to stop you from falling over. So first progression again, you do the same thing. You start in a pike position and the first progression is just a pushback. Pushback as far as you can, coming back forward. And what the pushback helps, us, help, helps with is mobility as well as overhead strength. So, you know, push back. Hold. For some of you, this may be a shoulder strength issue. It may be a mobility thing. It may be getting your head down, upside down. Okay, that will help with that. That's your first progression. Really simple, really easy, but it will work. Next one is to get your feet up on the wall into a bit of a pike. From there, feet up on the wall, pike. And what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and get my hips more and more. So I start a little bit away from the wall. And press, one. And what I'm gonna try and start to feel is trying to get my hips over the top of the shoulders. It's just my feet, press. Keep his arms locked out, press. If I can walk a bit closer, walk my feet closer, and I'm gonna bring my hands up, press. And now what starts to happen, you're going to a bit of a split. So next progression from here is to take one leg up. And as this leg comes behind, you're gonna start to feel this foot against the wall starts to coming off the floor. So not a soft foot, legs nice and straight, reach up. And I'm starting to find my balance. Hold, hold. You can see this other foot just coming off the wall a little bit. There, change. Straight leg, hold. And as this leg pulls behind, oop, come up into the air. Back down. Okay. Take your time, upside down. Keep those elbows locked out. If you need to rest, come down, shake your shoulders out. The next progression, I'm just gonna do it over on this side, is to go up into a full handstand, keep the feet in that full overhead position, and I'm gonna slowly gonna bring my feet off the wall. I'm gonna try and find a balance. I'm trying to get my heels and my feet off the wall, find that balance. So from there, something tight, press up, I was locked, press, shoulders through, squeeze against so bum's not against the wall, holding, and now, feet off the wall, holding just one foot one foot the one last thing about this is that if you need to kick down you can just 
bring your feet back to the floor. Press the shoulders, squeeze the glutes, press your feet up, hold the balance, rest, shake it out. Hold for as long as you're comfortable with, shoulders, go back up again. Try to bring your feet off the wall, find your balance, and try and play with finding that balance in that overhead position that are your shoulder floaters. Right guys, so that is your project inversion number four. Spend a little bit of time getting warm. Take your time finding the right progression, okay? We all got different levels of mobility. We all got different levels of strength. And depending on the scaling options, depends on how, what progression you're gonna use on the floor. So start on the easy progressions, progress up to the little bit more advanced, a little bit more difficult work, and then work within your position to try and improve your movement and trying to improve those holds. Take your time, have fun with session number four. Okay, then what we do is we do a little bit of wad prep work or a little bit of workout preparation, just getting ready for the workout that's gonna come. Okay, so what we gonna do is we do some step ups, we do some split leg good mornings, we do some burpees, we do some deadlift jumps, we do some stationary step ups again, and we do some two for one burpees. And we're doing two, uh, one rep, one rep, or it's actually about 10 reps down to one, one up to 10, five to one, one to five, okay, which means we're doing 10 of those, one of those, or what you can do to make it easier is do five, 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 work you all the way through. Okay, so the first one is step ups. You do a front step up first, step up, one, changing. This is just gonna get the heart rate going, gonna get the hips and the glutes firing. Pressing up two, two, go all up to 10 if you wanna go up to 10. If you wanna make it a little bit more difficult, you can do 10 on one side, press, hip drives, press, two, keep the chest up, stomach tight, push from the heels and the hips. Do 10 on one side, do 10 on the other side. Then we're gonna do split leg good morning. So split leg good morning, it was just the same stretch, slight stretch, push hips backwards, stretch, oh, stretch the hamstrings. One, if you wanna use a PVC pipe or a bar, press back, stretch, oh, two, and you're trying to press the hips backwards to get the hamstring to stretch, and this front leg to stretch, two. If the split leg is too much, you can just do a normal hinge at the hips. That's gonna get you warm for the workout. Do 10 of those. Then we do, to make it 10 burpees, do five burpees, chest to floor, press back. If you can do burpees, if you can do a step back, do a step back, if you can do a kick back, do a kick back. Remember you're using the kick back option if you maybe got some kind of a shoulder issue that you can't go all the way down to the floor. If you can go all the way down, rather develop that full range of movement by going slightly slower with the chest to floor push up, kick back up and do that. Deadlift jumps. Practice the movement. It's not a comfortable movement, so you've got to find a way of doing it. So you can do a deadlift, jump, deadlift, and then hips jump, deadlift, hips jump. Okay, so stretch the hamstrings and keep the chest up, hips through. If you're not going to do a deadlift jump, you can do a squat jump. Okay, if it's not a full squat, do half a squat. Half a squat. Okay, lateral step up, five to 10 step ups on the right, press up, step back down, press up, step back down, other side, five or 10 reps on the left or the right, and then the last one, two for one burpees, burpee, two push ups, jump back up, burpee, two push ups, jump back up, you can do that. And that should get you warm for the workout, okay? That is your Monday workout, 8th of June, it's a great start to the week. Go into your 20 minutes, set your clock, set your stopwatch, have a piece of chalk or a pen, do as many rounds of 20 lateral step ups, sorry, 10, but 10 each side, 20 deadlift jumps, seven for two for one burpees, and that's your Monday. Look forward to a good week, and we'll see you tomorrow.